I'm just gonna have a nice little Strava search here. Yes. Yes. Whoa. Mine, mine, all mine. Let's just see some. What is this? No. No. today but uh but first I should probably get changed <sighs> okay let's go so before I tell you guys about the race um I want to tell you a story about two and a half years ago I came here to Asia uh, I first went to Lijiang China all right so this is my last day on the mainland actually Pretty cool. Figured I would show people what my little morning routine looks like. So, about halfway through the morning run. I'm a little slower than usual, but not too bad. That's my favorite song. And I was there for about three months, and then I came to Taipei in about December. 2015. One of the reasons I went to Lijiang was because it was high altitude. I, no joke, googled around for highest elevation cities in China and I found this town. It was like 8,000 feet and I was like, that'll be a great place to just train and live. And it was. It was beautiful. It was gorgeous. But at that time, I didn't speak Mandarin Chinese and so communicating was a little difficult. I'm trying to find my, my place for the evening. The cab driver is awesome. And compounded with the fact that it was more or less in the middle of nowhere, I feel very isolated. That's why I decided to come here to Taipei. Which proved to be a good decision. I could still continue to study Mandarin Chinese. Um, obviously I could still run. Taipei is definitely not as pretty as the mountains of southwestern China in the Himalayas. Let's go out here and see some some beauty. Ni hao ma? What? This is insane. We hiked up that. The weather is effectively abysmal here for training, and I don't get any of those sexy high altitude adaptations that I did when I was out in the mountains. But I think at heart, I'm a, a little bit of a city boy, and I can only, I can only stay up in the mountains for so long before I need the energy and convenience and liveliness. Oh God, I don't want to get killed. That a city can break. So I got here in December, didn't know anybody, didn't speak the language, but I made it work. I, I met some really, really great people. Um, I built up a small little social circle. Got a job, etc., etc. And for whatever reason, I had set up, after a few months, I had set up myself to just be fantastically busy working on 50, 60 hours a week and also training an inordinate amount for the amount that I was working. I was putting in about 90 to 100 miles a week for a bit of time doing doubles every day except for Sunday. Also during the winters here in Taipei because it's in a valley it just rains constantly and that first winter I think it rained for like 60 out of 90 days or something stupid. Speaking of that if you're thinking of coming to Taipei to train you're like oh it could be a good place to go run for don't do that to yourself for God's sakes pick somewhere dry. It rains all the time during the winter and during the summer it's just egregiously hot and humid so you never stop sweating. In fact, in fact, I could probably count the amount of times that I've been dry at the end of a run on like one hand. Sort of kidding. Sort of not kidding. My shoes and socks, I have to leave behind a dehumidifier that cooks all day long and sucks the moisture out of them. My socks are, this is gonna be beautiful. You ready for this? Here's my socks, this guy's on. And I'm just gonna get a little bit squeezed. Oh yeah. All right, so after that little winter of solitude where I was putting down crazy mileage, crazy working hours, crazy 
non-dry hours. I was in a little bit of a funk, but nonetheless, my running was going reasonably well. I hadn't done any races though. The most recent race I had done was maybe five or six months prior. I did a time trial for one mile. Thank you, Alexander, for pacing me on the bicycle on that track in San Diego. I'm much obliged. So I did that time mile, one mile, 1,600 meters, about four minutes, 47 seconds, like the day before I left for China. So during those winter months when I was putting in all that crazy mileage, doing doubles, I was running in the morning, about 30, 40 minutes, easy near my place. And then at nighttime, I would come here. Sit on park. Don Park's great because it's, it's basically like the, the central park of Taipei. Um, it's the only park in Taipei. It's relatively big, one and a half miles for a full loop, but if you can do a horseshoe shape, you can do one mile, one mile. Um, sorry for you metric folks. If you've seen this video, I talk about the surface, but the great thing about Don Park is that it has a nice little soft dirt trail to run on. Which is obviously great for running because it's, it's soft and it's squishy and it's chill and there's no people or cars or bikes, blah, 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 blah. Which is good when you're running a billion miles by yourself. Kind of just like it gets to the point where after work you just want to come out and run, kind of get it over with, but you also want to like use the time to think and meditate and whatever. So yeah, I came here to this park basically for years and my running buddy has traditionally been my earphones and audiobooks. So running along this trail, I listened to all of the Harry Potter audiobook series three times over. It's Leviosa, not Leviosa. <laughs> I listened to the first four books of Game of Thrones. She was the oldest of the serving wenches at the Quill and Tankard, 40 if she was a day, but still pretty in a fleshy sort of way. Quite good, and a bunch of history pieces like Dan Carlin's hardcore history on the Mongols. Awesome, with like a 15 hour series. Chinggis was adept at psychological warfare of the most horrific kind. So interesting. Well yeah, so this is my place, and, and I wish I'd had more people to run with, but sadly I couldn't really find anybody. I found one person, my buddy Nickel, who's an ultra runner in Hong Kong, and then my friend Ludovic, who was my old roommate and a good friend of mine here. But 99% of my training was done totally alone. <laughs> After that winter in March, I noticed on Strava that I had a bunch of solid records for the area. And it seemed like the fastest record I had and the one I enjoyed the most was actually this spot, this trail, this run, what I'm doing right now. 0.48 miles to about 800 meters, 750 meters. My record was like 230. So then I came out here and I did a fart like workout and I threw down and I'm in the middle of the set and I ran a 214. Not the quickest time by any means. I pretty much right on pace with my, my one mile personal best. So I could have I like I, I could have run faster, let's say, but I never really like wanted to make a big thing out of it. Nonetheless, I would religiously police that stupid record. On Strava, when somebody beats a record, it says, oh no! Somebody beat your record on blah blah blah, and I'd be like, oh no, they did it! <laughs> and I'd go on and look, and every single time it was somebody on a bike. They would go on and it'd be like, they ran a, they did your segment in one minute 30 seconds, and I was like, what? They did what? On dirt, on this, on dirt? <sighs> so. So that brings me to today. Remember how I said, a few episodes ago that I was moving in the fall. I actually changed my plans. I'm moving tomorrow. I'm moving to, I'm moving to Paris, France, which I'm like above the moon excited for, nervous for, stressed out for, prepped for, etc, etc, etc. It hasn't really hit me yet. It'll hit me tomorrow night when I'm on the plane and like everything's done and it's official and all that. But before I left Taipei, I wanted to do one thing to to ensure that my my mark upon the city, upon my time here, my experience here, was solidified, at least for a small period of time. I checked today, and I still have the record, but someone a few months ago ran the exact same time, and I checked out his stuff, and I think he was actually running, which I'm like, it, 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 the, the time was coming. I had the record for like two two years. Oh, uh, 
，差不多一点半。哦，加油。So I prepped a little bit. By prepped, I mean I did nothing to really prep. I, I really should have. I didn't do any speed workouts. I didn't do any lactate threshold training.、Um, I, my 800 meter pace, my half mile pace, is somewhere in my legs.、Uh, it's far from comfortable or familiar, but nonetheless, I had a lot of coffee this morning, a lot of carbs, and I'm feeling pretty good.、Um, it's egregiously hot outside. It's like 94 degrees Fahrenheit, 35 degrees Celsius, 70% humidity. I've been running for about three and a half minutes. I'm already sweating profusely, but nonetheless. I'm going to shatter this record today, and hopefully it'll stay here for a while. Here's the finish line. I'm going to set you guys up over here somewhere, and I'm going to haul ass up from the starting point. So the tricky thing about this record is that, well, one, it's on dirt. Two, it's not straight, and then three, there's actually two hefty corners in there. So I can't just go straight. I have to like chop my steps, and I go on concrete for a second. I cut back, and there's a bush, and there could be people. So there's going to be obstacles. The other thing is that because this is a Strava record and not like an actual race, I'm relying on my GPS to give me an accurate thing. The last time I did this, I was in Lupini Park in Bangkok, Thailand, and on my last day there, I, I set the record. Well, I thought I set the record for the fastest loop around the park. The GPS thing didn't work. I've actually already broken this, my own record here before, but I was going the wrong direction. <laughs> I was coming this way, not going this way. All right, so I've done my customary 20-minute easy moseying jog. I'm already sweating profusely. My shorts are like, no, I wasn't swimming. So now that my customary easy 20 minutes is done, I do this before every race. So now it's time to do some chill dynamic stretching. Some fast strides. I might do like a few minutes hard, and then I have my techno music. And the most important piece is the psych. This is where a lot of races are done or undone. In the final parts, just before the race, the mental aspect. When I was younger, I was terrible at this, and I would psych myself out, and I would really just doubt myself and my abilities. As I've gotten older, and I put in a ton of training, but really I've just raced more. I know my body, I know my abilities. I'm a little more confident. And so it's really important, I think, before you go into a race, to just psych yourself up incredibly to the point where, at least right now, like, I'm gonna crush this. And I don't know how much faster I'm gonna run than I have run before, but I'm gonna do my best to at least go under two minutes and make it to where that, let's say, a professional runner happened to be coming through Taipei. They could very easily break my record, but they're gonna really have to be like, they're gonna have to like set aside some time for it. They're gonna have to change something. They have to really be like, oh man. Do I really, do I really want to go that fast? That bit? I mean, I could, but do I want to? And it's that's what I'm, that's what I'm going for. So quick enough to where anybody who's like really, really, really good at running sees my record and they're like, dude, that guy sucks. But then anybody who's not a professional owner is like, hey, it's, it's not bad. It's a deal. That's kind of that's my thing here. So I'm for sure gonna break it today. But the thing is, is I hope that it records because I'm gonna do my best. I'm gonna suck myself up so much to where when I finish, I really wanna be just like flat out. On my gut, on my stomach, just dead by the end of it. I want to really leave everything on this trail. So I hope I like won't need to like do it again. If the GPS doesn't work, which I hope it does, if it doesn't work, then it's just gonna have to be for another time. I'm pretty much just gonna have one chance at this because it's so hot out. I've lost so much fluid, and my 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 body temperature is gonna shoot up just for. I haven't even started doing like, the real warm up yet, so it's. <sighs> So I just did like a hard two minutes, five or ten minute rest, and then I'm gonna go into the. I'm gonna get into it. Gonna get out there and、uh, throw down here in Chinatown. Exceedingly hot outside. I've sweat so much already. I think my resting heart rate's been like 160, but it's okay. This is only gonna be like two minutes of effort. So I have my sexy go faster shoes on. My favorite flat is the Nike Zoom Streak LT2. Totally unsponsored plug, but of course Nike. I mean, come on, like. I know you want to get in on this sweaty sponsorship deal. All right, it's about that time. If I could kindly direct your attention over to the starting line.、Oh! All right, let's do it. No, I do not have my headphones. I do not have my music. For a runner, a race is a really special time. It's not often that we get to do this: push ourselves maximally to our limits. I don't want to distract myself from that experience. You know, Prefontaine once said, "A race is a work of art." If that's true, this track. Is the canvas, and the paint is my blood and sweat and tears, and I want to see that. I want to feel that. I want to hear all of that sensual and awesomeness because I don't always get to. So no music. 
Just the sound of my breathing and my footsteps and my ever increasing heart rate. Let's go. I didn't, uh, I didn't catch the time. I didn't catch the time, I don't know what I got. All right, so now I need to go upload it through my phone. I, I, I averaged, I think, 419 per mile pace. I don't know, man, it's hot out there. I don't know what I got, I gotta go. I'm gonna go back to my phone and upload it and pray. I hope I got the record. I'm not doing that again. <laughs> oh my God. Did you see my legs at the end? The weeble wobbles, oh my God. All right, let's go check. Okay. All right, put this there. Bluetooth on, oh my God. If this thing doesn't freaking work, I'm gonna be so mad and also physically tired. Okay. It's not working. I don't know why, oh my God, I'm so dizzy. I don't know why it's not working. I'm gonna have to go home and see. Cross your fingers, let's go home and we'll see if I got it. <sighs> okay. All right, I'm back, I cool down. I haven't stretched yet. I need to see if this is, and then this should hopefully be quicker. <sighs> the moment of truth. You guys ready? Boom. <laughs> nothing. There's nothing. What is this? What's going on here? I don't understand. What's going on? This is it. This is the bit right here. What did I... <laughs> didn't record so I'll have to go back in and manually see what the time was but the whole point was to have the Strava record <sighs> okay so thank you guys for following along today I'll see you later hello Hi guys, um, it's been two months. I'm so sorry. It's been yet another month since I since I posted. I'll explain in a future video like why it's been that way. But I'm I'm here. I'm in Paris, France. It's beautiful. It's amazing. But today I wanted to talk about three things. First thing is goals. Steve Jobs famously said, "Let the journey be the reward," which I I completely agree with. It's not the the achievement of of a goal that's that's the satisfying or the meaningful part. It you know, when you achieve a goal, like that feeling is is fleeting. It, it comes and it goes and it gets replaced by another goal. And then the process starts all over again. It, it's the, the journey, the path towards achieving that goal. That's the, the meaningful, the satisfying, the enjoyable part. And it's also where you ultimately learn and truly grow. That being said, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't make goals. It also doesn't mean that you shouldn't be relentless and driven in the pursuit of those 
goals. Because a life without goals is like lukewarm coffee, lukewarm tea, the devil's brew. Ugh. Make a goal, be bold, be brave, have conviction, go for it, and don't be afraid to fail at it. Just because you're enjoying the journey doesn't mean that you should not give everything and put your absolute best into the achievement of that goal. Second point, the outcomes of a goal. So you can obviously achieve the goal. Oh, that's great. You got it. It's so happy feeling. Ding. Okay. Then you could, you could fail at the goal. Oh, that's so sad. I know it sucks, right? I'm here to tell you and also show you with this video, there's a third option and it kind of ties together with that second, the, the failure. So when I moved to China about three years ago, uh, my goal was to live in the Western part of China, study Mandarin Chinese and turn myself into this like awesome runner, hermit up in the mountains this just like just get my legs like super jacked aerobically jacked and just be raw like awesome runner guy just like quentin cassidy in the book once a runner yes but instead of being there for two years i was there for about three months because i was mindful and adaptable and flexible in my pursuit of that goal and that's what today's video is about it's about being mindful and adaptable and flexible and listening to everything that's kind of happening listening to what your body's telling you, what your mind is telling you, what the universe is telling you, what your environment is telling you. I think as we are relentless in the pursuit of a goal, we can ignore everything, which is fantastic, because then nothing will stop you from achieving it, but you can also ignore signs from within. So I think the task I give to you guys is to pursue your goal relentlessly, but also be mindful. I relentlessly pursued my goal of moving to China and learning Chinese and getting better at running, but I was also mindful as I did it. And that mindfulness took me on a different path. And I was ultimately successful in those goals I'd set out to do in the first place. I speak Mandarin Chinese fluently and also my running has gotten so much better than it was three years ago. I thought the goal was this, but my path took me this way. And that's okay. As long as you're learning and you're growing on your path towards whatever goal it is, I think that's all that really matters. And you guys might find as I did, as you're being relentless in your pursuit of this goal, that mindfulness might take you down a different path towards a different goal, towards a different life that might be better or that might be something more enjoyable than what you previously thought or what you previously intended for yourself. It's impossible to know what's going to happen in the future, so you never know what chances or opportunities will come as long as you're listening and you're paying attention. So today's message, let the journey be the reward. You enjoy that journey. Make a goal, be relentless and driven in the pursuit of that goal, but then also be mindful. And so with that, oh yeah, I totally, I was you're like, Jake, what about the, what about the race? The, the Strava record? <sighs> okay, so like any uh, adaptable, mindful, flexible, driven, athletic, well-to-do young professional gentlemen such as myself would do. Um, I failed at breaking my previous Strava record. So what I did, I made a new Strava course. <laughs> If you go on to Strava, I'll link it in the description below. There is a new beautiful segment called The Jake, aptly named. Um, it is all on dirt, so you can't use a bike on there. It's 0.42 miles, 376 meters for you metric folk. And I ran it in one minute and 51 seconds. If you live in Taipei, yes, I ran that entire little dirt segment in one minute, 51 seconds. That's right. If you're a runner and you're cruising through Taipei, I encourage you guys to try and break it. It's not the fastest thing in the world. The conditions weren't perfect, but uh, I will be religiously policing that record. And if someone does break it, I might have to come back there and just, uh, just, just keep it, keep it going. That Strava segment, what was that called again? Oh, it was called the Jake. <sighs> It is now public, so feel free to go out there and uh, have a look. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video coming to you from Paris. Bye. I thought it'd be fun to share a bit about my time in Asia and take you guys on this little Strava journey. So make your goals, be mindful in your pursuit of them, and enjoy the journey. And until next time, happy untold.